Hello, hello, how are you? Uh, well, I've been busy building a studio, as you can see from these delightful shots here, which is effectively a spare bedroom, and I have been turning it into a little project studio. And I thought, you know what? This time I'm actually going to document the process. Of course, I failed miserably, only parts of it are documented, but I thought you might like to see anyway. And then there's some sexy shots at the end. So have a look in the description for chapters if you want to skip to a certain bit, but let's get on with it. First of all, um, I'm not scripting this. I've been putting this video off just because of the amount of effort it would take and the lack of time that I have. So if it seems a bit stumbly and crappy, well, yeah. This studio has been in the making for a long time, since approximately 2010, and I've iterated and improved my setup. It's changed spaces, it's changed the equipment, and I've put a little montage together of pictures that I could find throughout the ages. And uh, yeah, you can see it's kind of grown and developed, and this was the first time I actually had a dedicated space to set up as a studio without it having to be a living room or a bedroom and I was quite excited about that. So after finding the space one of the first things I had to do is design how I'm going to fit everything in and kind of just see what would acoustically work. I, I tried out a few different layouts. As many of you would know the traditional wisdom is to go long ways through a small room but as you can see here the room has a sloped wall, so having it going this way would mean that there would be an, a stereo imbalance. So I decided it would be best to face the slope and, and that would give the most symmetrical setup. And I think at this point, I want to point out the fantastic work of Yesco uh, over at Acoustic Insider and I'll, I'll link to his channel and he's just a wealth of information and pretty much all of the acoustic side of this build is based on uh, his advice. So go check that out. I bought his awesome Build a Better Bass Trap uh, course. I didn't end up going down the route of building them myself, but the methodology of placing the bass traps was invaluable. So yeah, go, go check him out. Right, so here we are, all moved in, a load of crap everywhere, and the first thing I have to do is find out exactly where the sweet spot is. So it's, um, I'm moving forward and backward in the room, listening to see where I can find the most even bass response in the room before I even attempt any acoustic treatment, because you want to start with, you know, the very best foundation acoustically before trying to tame any annoying resonances. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm listening to some music that I'm very familiar with, and I'm also listening to some sign warbling, which is great fun. Eventually, I find the sweet spot, and I'm very, very, very happy about that, let me tell you. Found it. Ooh, now here's the centerpiece of the studio. I was very excited about this. A new desk from Toman. I'd never had a proper studio desk before. I had a little wobbly metal thing, and though it was quite useful because it had loads of holes in it so I could attach things to it, uh, it was not fit for purpose, and I'm sure it, it didn't do anything good for the music, so I got myself a new desk, and now here's a very sped up montage of me building that desk. And yeah. Uh, if you're interested in hearing my, my thoughts about the desk as a sort of review, uh, I'm happy to share them if anybody is interested. There's so much stuff missing from here. I, I, I hooked up my audio interface and various other things, and here I am setting up my isopod things and my speaker stands where I just about where I want them. And coming up next is the second centerpiece, which is a new keyboard with proper weighted keys and I am very happy to have had that delivered so let's open that up and put it in place and this thing feels amazing uh most of the time I have fairly spongy feeling tiny little keyboards and this is a nice proper meaty one that feels quite nice to hammer on and it looks really cool with the black and white on the desk I think so very happy with that next thing I had to put speakers in place so I put the speakers in place. It took a little while to get them to form a 
uh, vague equilateral triangle. I know equilateral triangles aren't vague, but well, mine is. Next, I had to add the subwoofer. And I put a little some isopods under there. They didn't end up staying there because they made it a bit too high off the ground and it wouldn't fit under the things I did later, namely the base traps. Bit of cable tidying. Yeah, always always good fun. Lots of cables, slightly tidier, tidier cables. It's still a mess. And then I put the speakers up. Oh, look, look. There's my little 3D model. Look, it's me. Uh, yeah, there, there was a window in this above the door and it was letting light in and I didn't like it. Here's some expertly annotated dimensions for the room before I got the final delivery of my base traps. As you can see, I decided to go with the majority of them as freestanding base traps and I bought these little furniture legs and attached them to the bottom of them so that I can move them if I need to in the future and they're not, I'm not drilling too many holes in the wall. Uh, and I think it looks really cool. Definitely very cool. And it was an exciting day when all these showed up. And yeah, I got to drill some holes in the wall. It was just glorious. And after those were drilled, I put up the nice, even bigger base traps that have diffusion in front of them. These are all from GIK Acoustics. Hopefully I'll, I'll put a link to their website if you're interested in getting some acoustic treatment for yourself. They're all a minimum of 15 centimeters deep because that's kind of the best bang for your buck when it comes to porous absorption. So I put those ones up and I think they look really, really sexy. And uh, yeah, I did a bunch of measurements with, I bought Room EQ Wizard a few years back and it comes with the, the microphone. So I decided I would measure acoustically the response of the room, which we will see in a bit. And yeah, that's what's kind of phase one of the acoustic treatment done. Which I think already looking pretty damn good. You can see the microphone there. Yeah, I like I like these colors. Not necessarily the most acoustically wonderful binary binary amplitude diffusers. Then phase two started, which started of course with inserting a large wooden plank and um, by insert I mean of course attached to the ceiling the plank of wood is connected to the joists and then I hang the panels from that plank of wood uh, and it gives us a nice gap between which uh, enhances the uh, absorption of low frequencies Ooh. and I didn't really film much of this but I struggled a lot to actually attach these to the ceiling and film at the same time so I ended up just attaching those to the ceiling and finishing off there's a little bit of bare wall so these are just felt boards now let's check out the acoustic responses so the first one is the entirely untreated room you can see it's quite a wiggly line above there in the SPL which is on the top right of the screen on the lower right of the screen is the waterfall response which you can see in the base area it was resonating like yeah it was unpleasant it was not not the worst not the worst i've ever worked in but it could certainly do with some improvement so i did a measurement then straight after on with just the monster base trap that i already had from my old studio which i'd mounted in the corner and that made a drastic difference but I must say I did turn down the sub a little bit here. So it's not a like for like comparison, but yeah, you get the idea. Uh, going forward though, I kept all of the, the, the gain levels on, on the microphone and uh, the levels on the sub the same. So they should be equivalent. The next thing I did was add the two front corner bass traps. You can see in the little, the little plan there. So to the right and left of me, facing forwards and that improved it more which is great and then the entire front wall 
So that's three more monster base traps. Uh, and that improved it even more. You can see looking quite good. Then I added the diffusion panels to the right, left and behind. And that's where we reached here. So that was kind of phase one. There was a few months in between before I uh, did the ceiling mounted ones. And so, yeah, here's with all the ceiling mounted done. And finally, we've got with uh, sonar works. So quite flat. And as you can see from the waterfall chart, um, an immense difference. And I can tell you the bass response and the transients is the best I've ever heard in a, one of my own studios. I mean, yeah, I've heard better. But for a home studio in a little spare bedroom, it's fantastic, honestly. Uh, so let's look. This is untreated versus fully treated. So you can see quite a stark difference and you can really, you can really hear it. So um, acoustic panels from GIK, um, methodology from Yesco at uh, Acoustics Insider. Sounds amazing. And uh, yeah, so that's the, that's the whole studio build. Uh, let's move on to some of the glamour shots and a rundown of my equipment. Ooh. So let's have a look at what I've managed to stuff into this room, which is an astonishingly large amount of things. Uh, I think I'll start with the lights. I'm quite fond of my coloured lights. I think it brings a nice atmosphere. Uh, to a space and the fact you can change them is just I just like it I mean shoot me come on so the majority of them are either Philips Hue or they are Govi and these bars that um, go round the diffuser that is behind me is a Govi one and this one that stands up is a Govi Lyra I've got various other light up knickknacks um, I like my lights what can I say? Uh, I decided it was still quite dark, especially for filming, so I managed to get hold of some of these uh, LED panel lights for filming and videography and whatnot. And they were on Amazon for ridiculously cheap as a return for three of them. And uh, they light up the space nicely and I added a little diffuser in front of them myself just because they were a little bit harsh but for the money they are superb honestly so let's move on to the desk my main monitors they are yamaha hs 7s and i've had these for a while now i think since 2013 and they have served me very well um one day one day i might upgrade but for now i mean what with the new acoustic treatment here they sound superb and it's like giving them a whole new lease of life and then i've got the hs8 sub just to give a little bit of a low end kick and together obviously they're designed to work together really really good i also have this little avantone mix cube i don't use it as often as i should uh when i used to mix bands this was uh for getting vocal levels this thing is amazing you can get perfectly level vocals and because it's um, it doesn't have a bass port, it's really quite tight sounding and it gives you that mid-range focus and it's great for mixing. Um, both of those are hooked up to my MoCo ESI monitor controller so I can switch between them and uh, make it go loud or make it go quiet with a little twist of a knob. I have a Focusrite Scarlett interface. Served me well. I uh, have... Uh, bodged it onto being a rack mount <laughs> using uh, a lot of uh, cable ties and things but the headphone amp could be a bit better so I've got a dedicated headphone amp which is a, a topping let me have a look a topping L30 and uh, I have a variety of headphones lots of headphones too many headphones i have sennheiser hd 600s i have my precious precious bear dynamic dt 880s i love those things uh, loads of other ones closed back ones for recording uh in-ear monitors so I'm, I'm i'm a bit obsessed it's, it's, it's the truth of the matter here uh the computer is mac mini works fine it's quite nice and i've got a 
4K Lenovo screen. Maybe I should have gone for the ultra wide, maybe, but it works. It works really well. Keyboard and mouse Logitech MX something or other also works really nice. I like it. I like it a lot. I uh, recently got this stream deck thing so I can turn my lights on and off. I can turn my guitar amp on and off. I can choose which lights I want. I can switch my monitor outputs. It's really quite cool. Um, I haven't even scratched the surface of what this thing's capable of. I wanted to set it up to reply to emails and whatnot with a bunch of canned responses. Then there's a load of other peripheries around. Goodness me, there's so much stuff. I've got this nice little cable uh, management system. Uh, can't remember what it is off the top of my head, what it's called. I will probably put an annotation in if I can remember. And it it holds all of the cables in a little bungee cord thing with a ball on the end, which hooks into a receptacle for said balls and hangs all the cables nicely. So you saw the keyboard earlier. That's my main thing for playing the music that I make. And that is a studio logic sl73 studio so it's 73 keys which is not quite 88 but it fits in this desk just fine and i don't feel like i need those extra keys i don't miss them and obviously you saw the desk a toe man desk i will put the model number on the screen it has served me very well i really like it what's next i've got a fan here i mean i run quite hot need a fan this is a very quiet fan because i mean i don't want a loud fan when i'm trying to mix music if i'm doing critical listening the fan has to stay off it just has to stay off it's, it's too noisy but i like having a fan i like being comfortable of microphones i have several uh the ones i use most often are the sm7b which uh, i'm recording this vocal on and to record acoustic instruments and uh singing I use the Neumann TLM 103. I have a handful of others as well, um, but those two are the ones I use most of all. And I recently got this ukulele. It's concert sized. It sounds really good. It's very easy to play. Uh, I got it from Terman.de. It's a made in Portugal one. So yeah, already been recording a few tracks with that. So I've got my four main trusty guitars here. Um, so I. I try and keep it just to the things that I use the most. I've got my Rickenbacker 4003, which um, is very good, just DI'd, and that's very handy to have a, just a really nice bass sound straight on tap if I need to record a bass line. It's my go-to bass. It's quite comfortable. It's quite chunky. I like it. I have a Gibson SGJ, I think a Junior. This one was on offer once, and it was shockingly cheap for a usa made guitar so i bought it it's nice it's easy to play i've upgraded it with a bunch of bits uh sounds nice it's got the stock pickups um so i need a humbucker sound that's the one i go for next one is a made in mexico fender strat and it's been modified a bit with a david gilmore um switch so i can mix in the bridge and the neck pickups together which gives it a different sound. Just, I like to be able to make sounds. You may have guessed that. And then I've got my tiny little acoustic guitar. I wanted a guitar that was small and easy to play and also without too much low end because I am not a performing artist really. I'm a recording artist and I find that I'm always taking out the low end in these instruments anyway. So what the hell is the point of me even being there? if I'm just going to EQ them away. So I just get things that don't sound overly bassy. And on the subject of not overly bassy, here is my Harley Benton guitar amp. Sounds really good. And it's not overly bassy, so I don't have to shelf out so much stuff. It's focused on the mid range, which works perfectly for recording. Um, this thing was inexpensive for a valve amp. It sounds good. Uh, it's the first valve amp, in fact, I've ever bought. I've tried to make a pedal board that's very versatile and uh, I can get lots of different sounds out of this. And it's very handy for recording. I've got this little storage unit here, really good. I just, it's stuffed full of more crap. Cables, other weird peripheries, strange instruments. 
Here's some knickknacks and things that are over just to spread a bit of, I suppose you might call it personality in the room. Some might call it clutter. And others might call it dust magnets. I call it lovely little things. And yes, I've got lots, lots of lovely little things that I have accumulated, as I said, over a long time. A long time I've been doing this. And yeah. That's an overview of the equipment I've got. I don't think I've got anything else pertinent to share about that. Oh, 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 yes, my chair. This is a brilliant story. So this is a Herman and Miller Aeron. You'll see them in studios everywhere. It's a very famous chair. It's in museums and whatnot. As a design icon, I found this in a charity shop. And this chair, even secondhand, costs seven, eight hundred pounds. I saw this one and it was £10 and I immediately ran over to it and grabbed it and I wouldn't let go and yeah I paid for it and then had to carry it back to uh, the flat I was at at the time up four stories of stairs which was I mean it was worth it it was definitely worth it this thing is built like a tank and I think it'll last me for forever and god I'm such a jammy jammy get aren't I getting this for £10 so lucky that was de yeah and it's comfy and it works nice and it looks nice and I like it I like a lot of things don't I I think that's it so that is the story of this little studio um, I hope you enjoyed it so as you may have uh, deduced by now I make music and what kind of music I hear you scream um, well, I make royalty-free music, which is free to download for everyone. So head over to silvermansound.com and download yourself some free music. Of course, I appreciate um, any support you can give me to keep music free, donations, Patreon. And on that note, I'd like to thank my Patreons. Uh, they literally keep silvermansound.com online and keep that resource there for everyone. So thank you very much to my Patreons. I appreciate you guys. I think that's it then. All right, shine on.